السلام عليكم ورحمة الله ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذل له ومن يذلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في الكتاب الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال سبحانه وتعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما وقال سبحانه وتعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد ولا آله وصحبه أجمعين Ameen, Amma Ba'd. We begin in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We begin by praising Him, by glorifying Him. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send peace and blessings upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower this gathering with His mercy and make it a source of blessings for us, a source of forgiveness for us, a source of learning for us in dunya and akhira say Ameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentioned to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in the Qur'an, فَقُصُصِ الْقَصَصِ Tell them the stories of the nations that went before. لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ So that the people start to think deeply about them. And in those stories that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala related to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa are not just stories for entertainment. These are stories that happened, historical events. Stories of people that had lived, that had experienced things, and the, and the effect of iman on the lives of these people. And one such story, the Prophet ﷺ, he was telling the Sahaba, when Surah Al-Buruj came down, وَالسَّمَاءِ ذَاتِ الْبُرُوجِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْمَعُودِ You know the surah. قُتِلَ أَصْحَابُ الْأُخْدُودِ When this surah came down, the Prophet ﷺ narrated to the Sahaba, أَصْحَابُ الْأُخْدُودِ These are a group of people that used to live in Yemen. And what happened, there was a tyrant king, an evil king. And this king, he had a sorcerer who was working for him, getting older. And he had dominant control over his people. He was a totalitarian regime. He had done everything evil you can imagine under the sun, including claim that he is God. And so he wanted to have somebody succeed his, success, his sorcerer. So he said, why don't you go and look in the city and find the valedictorian, the most intelligent student who is going to take over your position and train him. This is a succession story. So they went and they found this boy. And this boy happened to be the smartest boy that lived in that era. And so he started to teach him all about the dark arts, about black magic, about how to cast spells, about this thing, that thing. And he would every day leave his home, go to this person's house, and he would learn about these things. And one day on the way there, he comes across an old man has beaming light on his face, Noor. And so he comes to him and says, what are you doing? The man is sitting there making dhikr under the tree. He said, I'm just remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
I'm just making mention of Allah. He said, who is Allah? He has no idea. He said, Allah is the one who created the heavens and the earth. He is the one that has control over every atom in the universe. The one who's making your heart beat. The one who you know, grants you breath after breath. The one who's given you vision, hearing. And he starts to go into details, uh, describing the attributes and the gifts and the ni'am of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded in the Quran. Ya ayyuhal nas, udhkuru ni'matullahi alaykum. O mankind, remember the favors of Allah upon you. <coughs> And so this boy, as he starts to learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he comes to the realization that this life that this man is telling him about, and the other one, the dark one, is the other one, they're contradictory to each other. Both of them cannot be true at the same time. You can't be calling on demons and shayateen and committing atrocities and evil at the same time claim to be a religious person. This is a contradiction. And so... He starts to weigh the options. He has no clue which one is the truth yet. Either the path of atrocities and evil or the path of devotion and, and you know, holiness. And so he starts attending both of them. Every day he goes, first he sits with the, 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 the wali of Allah and he starts learning about Allah, about dhikr, about salah, about prayer and all these things. And then he goes to the other one and he's arriving late. And, so, and then when he leaves from there, he's arriving home late. And so the shaykh teaches him, says, when you go there, tell them your family kept you. When you come here, tell them that the, the, your, your teacher kept you. But keep your iman hidden. Because you're living in a time, if it becomes known that you have iman and you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you go against the regime, and you go against the king, and you denounce their religion, and you denounce their evil, you denounce your atrocity, bad things will happen to you. Bad things will happen to you. So you cannot expose yourself like this. This is the advice he gives him. And this is a sentiment a lot of Muslims feel. That, you know, if I stand up for the truth, if I speak for the truth, I don't know if I'm going to lose my job. I don't know if this is going to happen to me, that's going to happen to me. But there are cases in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about, for example, Mu'min al-Fir'aun, the believer who lived in the household of Fir'aun. He was there when he saw Fir'aun commit his atrocities. He was there when he saw Fir'aun massacre babies. He saw all of that and he was a mu'min and he maintained his iman. And such times will come, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, when the end of time comes, holding on to iman will be like holding on to a burning coal. You're going to suffer because of your iman. And that's okay. That's okay. And so this young man, he keeps his iman hidden. And he's learning more and more and more. Every single day, his status is being elevated and elevated. And also he's learning the dark arts at the same time. Imagine a person learning black magic and Islam at the same time. And he's maintaining both of them. Until what happens, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him a special status. And one day he's arriving, he's going there and he finds, you know, there's some road is being blocked. All the, the merchants that are going through that road, they're all in a state of fear and panic. He said, what's going on? They said, oh, aren't you the student of the sorcerer? We have a problem. There's a lion or some beast on the road and we're afraid to pass. He says, okay, don't worry, I got this. I got the skills, I got the knowledge. So he starts to put into practice everything he learned from the sorcerer. And he finds nothing worked. Whatever he had, you know, black magic, incantations, you know, if, if fireballs, use your imagination. Nothing worked. And then he said, Ya Allah, if the religion of that old man is true, then kill this beast for me. And he picks up a pebble and he throws the pebble at the beast and the beast falls dead. La ilaha illallah. This is confirmation for him. This is confirmation that everything that he learned about the, the evil way of life, it is batil. It has no benefit and it is not useful for anything. And everything that he had learned from the shaykh about Islam and Iman, about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's the reality. That's the real power. And so he starts to lean into Islam. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevates him and elevates him. And miracles start to happen in front of him. People come to him sick and ill, you know, all, suffering from all kinds of ailments. And he makes dua for them. His dua is accepted immediately. They become better. And this starts to spread. The word starts to spread. And the rumors start to come around. Oh, the sorcerer's apprentice is a, a powerful one. You know, he's, he's healing people. And he's doing this. He's doing that. The word reaches the king. And so what happens? You know, one of the blind servants of the king, he comes to him. 
He says, I have been suffering with blindness all my life and I have heard that you can heal. He said, I cannot heal. I don't know what you've heard. He said, then what is all these rumors that I've heard? He said, it's not me who heals. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who heals. It is the one who created the heavens and the earth who heals. It is the one when you fall blind, he is the one who gives vision. He is Al-Basir, the one who sees and the one who grants vision. He is the one who brings the dead back to life. It's not me, I'm not able to do anything. I just invoke him, I just call upon him, I supplicate to him and he's the one that makes things happen. And this man hearing this, he's amazed by this. He said, okay, why don't you supplicate? He said, it's not going to work just for anybody. You have to have Iman. You have to have Iman. You have to believe. If you believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to take care of you, He will take care of you. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He said in a hadith, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Hadith Qudsi, I am in the opinion of my servant. Whatever he thinks of me, I am that to him. La ilaha illallah. Right? Your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala depends on your opinion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the man, he testifies, he says, La ilaha illallah. He renounces all the idols. He renounces everything evil. He says, I believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At that, the boy makes dua for him. Ya Allah, restore his sight for him. And the man is able to see. He's so excited. He's so amazed. He's so profoundly moved by this experience that he's able to see. He runs out and he says, Allah healed me. Allah healed me. The boy made dua and Allah healed me. And he starts to spread the news everywhere. And the word reaches the king. This boy is not healing in the name of you and the idol worships or all these things. He's healing in the name of some other deity named Allah. This is a problem for him. And so they bring the boy and they say, is this true? Is this true that you have been worshipping other than the king? Is this true that you have submitted your allegiance and your alliance to other than the, you know, to other than your master, the one who's sitting on the throne? He says, I submit myself to the one who created me. Now where did you get this idea from? You submit yourself to the one who created you, the one who gave me life. Who taught you that? And they torture him, and they torture him, and they tie him up, and they torture him for a long time until he gives up the name of his sheikh. And they go and they massacre his sheikh. They kill him. But the sheikh had warned him, Oh my son, miracles are happening in your hands. Beware now, Allah is going to test you. Your iman has reached the level, beware now, your tests are going to be more difficult. The higher your iman is, the more difficult the tests are. And the most severely tested people were the prophets and the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so when the iman is raised high and you're more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Allah tests those whom he loves. Allah tests those whom he loves. You see the beloveds of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the world today. And you see them. Allah has chosen them for a special love. And so this man, he's being tortured and finally his teacher is killed and the king, he says, if you don't denounce your religion, if you don't renounce your religion and come back, he doesn't want to lose this asset, you know? He says, then I will make an example out of you. He said, okay, make an example out of me. I will never give up my deen. You, I, I will give up my position. I will give up my home. I will give up my family. I will give up everything of this dunya. I will never give up Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah is the one who is the real, al-haq. And all power is in his hands. And all majesty is in his hands. Even if you kill me, I'm just going to go back to him. La ilaha illallah. Ready to be shaheed. So the king says to his servants, to his soldiers, he says, take him, put him on a ship, take him far into the sea, tie a rock on his foot, and toss him into the water. Okay, other king. They take him, they put him in a ship. As they're going out into the sea, what happens? The boy makes dua, Ya Allah, take care of those oppressors the way you want to take care of them. Ya Allah, take care of these oppressors the way you want to take care of them. Say Ameen. And so what happens? Storms come. Waves starts to stir and they get bigger and bigger until the waves are like mountains. And all these people on this ship, they fall off one by one by one. All of them die except the boy. And the, sh this, the ship lands back on the shore and he walks back into the court of the tyrant. He walks back into the presence of the oppressor. He says, you wanted to get rid of me, but it's not that easy. How are you doing? A man becomes furious. He says, soldiers, take this man. Take him up the mountain, toss him down the mountain, throw rocks over his body, make an example of him, I tell you. 
Haram. Haram. Big haram. So they take him. They go up the mountain. La ilaha illallah. The boy makes a dua. Ya Allah. Oh, the one who has the power over this entire dominion. Oh, the one who has control over every single affairs of all of creation. Ya Allah, I ask you, take care of these oppressors the way you want to take care of them. Say Ameen. And so as the boy makes his dua, the earth starts to shake. And rock starts to tumble. And all these soldiers, you know, wrapped up in their armors and gears, they all get crushed under these stones. And the boy comes back unharmed to the presence of the king. He says, you wanted to get rid of me, but Allah had other plans. What are you going to do? The king says, is there any way I can kill you? He says, there's one way. Call all of your people. Have a day of festivities and feast. And he says, bring them all and let them be spectators and tie me to a pole and then shoot me with an arrow in the name of Allah. In the name of Allah. The king says, no problem. I will make that happen. He calls everybody. He ties the boy to a pole. He brings his bow and arrow. And he, shoot, and he takes his aim and he shoots his arrow misses. And the people start smirking and laughing. He tries again and he shoots and he misses. And the people start smirking and laughing. And then he comes to the boy and says, what is going on? What is this sorcery, this magic? You told me it would work. He said, king, you forgot a special word. You have to say, Bismillah, in the name of Allah. That's the only way it will work. So the king goes back, he says, Bismillah, loud, boom, shoots. And the arrow pierces the heart of the boy. And he dies on the spot. And all the people that are watching, they see that the king is nothing but a human being. The, the one who claimed to be God, the one who claimed to be powerful, the one who claimed to be Lord over them, they see his weakness and they see the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He couldn't even kill a child properly. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, without the mention of his name, this boy, he, you know, he wouldn't have been killed. And all his soldiers failed, he failed. And then when Allah's name was brought into the mix, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called for himself a shaheed. A shaheed. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he said, top hundred levels of Jannah are reserved for the shaheed. The shaheed, they feel the pain of death like one of you would feel a pinch. La ilaha illallah. Right? And they are, when they die, their bodies don't decompose. The earth, it is haram for the earth to eat their bodies. Their, their blood smells like musk. La ilaha illallah. And so the boy dies shaheed. When the people watching see the sacrifice of this boy, so that they could know the reality of la ilaha illallah, all of them suddenly get up and they proclaim, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. All the town becomes Muslim. Everybody stirred and moved because they witness in front of them shahada taking place. They're all moved and they start to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just as you see today, many, many, many non-Muslims are going and reading the Quran and they're taking their shahadas. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes a shaheed from this ummah, that happens with a reason. That happens with a purpose. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala moves this whole nation and they all become Muslim. La ilaha illallah. And then you think this is a happy ending. No, you know what happens next? Qutila ashabul ukhdud. This king transgresses beyond imagination. He digs trenches and he sets fire and he brings all of them one by one. And he says, denounce your faith or you will be burnt in these flames. Denounce your faith or we will throw you into the fire. And each one of them, they say, do whatever you want to me. Do whatever you want to me. For I know now without a single doubt that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is real. That this life is worth nothing that I am going to return to the one who created me. Do whatever you want. And so they throw them one by one into the fire. And the Prophet ﷺ said, a mother is holding her baby in her arm and she's being brought to the flames. And they tell her, denounce your faith or you and your baby will burn in this fire. And she says, you know, she, for a moment she hesitates. And Rasulullah ﷺ said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused the baby to speak. Oh my mother, don't worry, jump into it. The other side of it is Jannah. Jump into it. The other side of it is Jannah. Do not denounce your faith. La ilaha illallah. And so we have these stories. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told us these stories. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to us stories after stories. Why? La'allahum yatafakkaroon. So that you may think deeply. Because it's very easy to see the surface of the picture and become overwhelmed with sadness. 
become overwhelmed with, with sadness and, and anxiety and fear and your hearts become heavy and you are a Muslim and you're here in safety of your homes and you're shedding tears while they're having their homes blown up and they're saying, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. And so we have to strengthen our Iman, strengthen our Iman and, and, and place complete trust in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is nothing that happens without the permission of Allah. There is nothing that happens without the permission of Allah. And whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows to take place, it is for a greater purpose, a greater reason. You and I may not be able to see it, but they know it and, and, and the believers know it and the Quran has mentioned it. That in the end, The people who have taqwa, they will have the eventual outcome. And so your goal and my goal is to be from the people of taqwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O people of Iman, اتقوا الله حق تقاته. Have taqwa of Allah the way Allah deserves. وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ And don't die except in a state of submission and complete surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Can we say we believe in Allah? Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us second command. After you have your taqwa, after you have your iman straightened out, وَاَعْتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Hold on to the rope of Allah, all of you together, and don't become divided. Oh Muslims, don't become divided. This is how, how you're in the state that you're in. You've become divided. You can't sit next to each other without accusing your brother of something. وَاَعْتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ مَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ And remember the favors of Allah upon you. You used to be enemies to each other. You couldn't stand one another. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought your hearts together. Allah is the one who brought your hearts together. وَأَسْفَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا By His greatest blessing, you became brothers. He have a universal fraternity of brotherhood and sisterhood in Islam. This is unheard of, right? And so this is a great blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is something when you become divided, you take it for granted. And then what happens? The wolves come and attack you. The wolves come and take you. And you're all saying, what am I going to do? I'm just one person. And there's eight, you know, two, three billions of you. Each one of them saying, what am I going to do? I'm just one person. Three billion people. La ilaha illallah. And so, don't become divided. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions, وَكُنْتُمْ عَلَىٰ شَفَىٰ حُفْرَةٍ مِّنَ النَّارِ فَأَنْقَذَكُمْ مِّنْهَا All of you used to be on the edge of Jahannam. You're on your way there. I saved you from it. I pulled you back. Right? Allah is telling you, salvation? Don't worry, I took care of you. You take care of your brothers and sisters. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, the believers are like a wall with each one of them a brick supporting the other. Each supporting the other. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, believers are like a body. If part of it is afflicted, the whole of it responds in fever. Right? So it's, 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 it's in our blood, it's in our DNA, it's in our faith, it's in our iman. If you profess and you claim you have iman, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, make an effort to build your taqwa. Make an effort to start establishing unity. Stop hating on other Muslims. Whatever the, the reason is, He's Sufi, he's Salafi, he's this, he's that. Put all of that aside. We have bigger fish to fry. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us unity. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen this ummah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us patience in these difficult times. Ya Rabbil Alameen, aquli qawli hadha, astaghfirullah alaikum, fastaghfiru, innahu huwa al-ghafur al-rahim. Allahumma ta rabbi la ilaha illa ta kharaqtani wa nabdiku wa nabdiku wa nabdiku wa الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. and to continue those ayat, Allah سبحانه وتعالى then calls out to the people of Iman. ولتكن منكم أمة يدعون إلى الخير. let there rise from amongst you. this is a call to action. let there rise from amongst you people who are going to call to goodness. وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْحَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ And they enjoin what is good and they forbid what is evil. وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ And these are the ones that are successful. 
How do we understand and, and put this ayah into action? Our scholars have said, each one of you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you a unique set of skills and knowledge and, and you know, certain you know, things that, that you have, others don't have. It's uniquely yours. In what capacity that Allah gave you, what can you do to further the cause of calling people to what is khair? What is khair? And khair is a type of goodness that brings benefit. You know, we have different words in the Quran used for goodness. Ni'mah. Hasana and khair. You know, khair is the one that brings benefit as opposed to sharr, which brings evil and more harm. And so you have to be people who are calling to khair. Means you have to be future oriented. You have to be strategic. You have to think long term. And you have to work together and organize. And rise an ummah amongst you who's going to do this. This is, this is not a one thing, one person thing. Right? You have to unite to be able to do this. And so... We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the ability and to grant us the tawfiq, to grant us the, 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 the means to get together and to establish some kind of strategic way to move this ummah forward. Say ameen. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, we ask you to have mercy on all of us, Ya Allah. All our families, Ya Allah. All our loved ones, Ya Allah. All the Muslims all over the world, Ya Allah. All the Mu'mineen and all the Muslimin, Ya Allah. Ya Rabbil Alameen, we ask you to have mercy on us, Ya Allah. Ya Rabbil Alameen, we ask you to grant us ease, Ya Allah. Ya Rahman, Rahman, we ask you to remove from us calamities and oppression and difficulties, Ya Allah. Ya Rahman, Rahman, we ask you to grant victory to those who are oppressed, Ya Allah. We ask Ya Rabbil Alameen to elevate them, Ya Allah. We ask Ya Rabbil Alameen to aid them and help them, Ya Allah. Ya Arhamar Rahmin, we ask you, anyone struggling in their lives, Ya Allah, we ask you, Ya Rabbil Alameen, grant us to strengthen the courage to overcome the challenges, Ya Allah. We ask you, Ya Arhamar Rahmin, by your immense mercy and your forgiveness, Ya Allah, overlook our, all of our sins and all of our mistakes, Ya Allah, and make whatever wrong we have done, Ya Allah, you turn it to the right direction, Ya Allah. Ya Rabbil Alameen, we ask you to not let us die except in a state of Iman, Ya Allah. Make our last words, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen aqimu salah